Today in the physics lab, we're looking at wave behavior using a slinky. We have two different types of waves that we're going to experiment with. We're going to experiment with transverse waves and with longitudinal waves. And this is mostly a, a, an experimental version of the lab where we're gonna kind of do something and then observe. So first we've got our slinky stretched out across the floor and our lab partner is going to send a single wave pulse to our hand by sliding their hands at right angles to the slinky. So a quick pulse to the other side. Now observe what happens when the slinky gets to the other side. Good, do it again, quick. That's a good one. Do one more real quick. Perfect. Okay, so we can see what happens when it, hap when it flips to the other side. Hopefully you noticed that. And now we're gonna send several pulses and see what happens if we try to increase the amplitude, which is like high or low. So we're gonna send multiple pulses. Perfect. And we see those incoming wave is called an incident wave. And then the one that bounces back is called a reflected wave. All right, so the, the slinky is lined up. The amplitude of this wave would be how much energy our partner puts into it and how big that pulse gets. The speed of the wave is how quickly the energy gets from one side to the other. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the other type of wave, which is called a longitudinal wave. So we're gonna shake our hands to and fro. So we're gonna send one pulse to the, to the partner a big mm -hmm, show. And we can see this dark area move the length of the slinky and then bounce back. Excellent. What happens if we send a couple of those? Perfect. All right, so that dark area, we've compressed these coils together. That's called a compression. And then the band between them is where they're spread out. That's called a rarefaction. Okay, so now we're going to create a standing wave. This is interference between the incoming wave and the reflected wave. So this first lowest frequency that we can do this at is gonna make this look like a big loop, like a big jump rope. A little slower, a lot slower. So remember the first one we want it to look like a big jump rope. Oh. So huge. There you go, bigger, but um, slower. Okay. There you go, like this. So at any point in time, we're only seeing half of a wave. This is the fundamental frequency. All right, so we wanna now shake it at twice as frequent and see what happens. So now we should have that one fixed point in the middle. There you go, perfect. So now the whole length of the slinky makes one full wave. We have a high point and a low point, and then we've got a point in the middle that looks like it doesn't move. What happens to our wave if we increase the frequency of this? Good. And now what if you increase it again? Good. Now can you go even faster, but not as bigger. Does that make sense? Yep. Perfect. So the wave moves from my partner to me, but there comes a point where it looks like the wave is just stationary. And that's where the perfect timing of the wave sent to my partner and the wave that's bouncing back are interfering with each other. And that's a standing wave. And we have those points that look like they don't move and then we have loops on either side of them. That was perfect. Okay, so for this next part, my partner and I are both gonna send waves at the same time, and we wanna look at where they meet. So my partner's gonna flip one pulse to his left, and I'm gonna go one pulse to my right, and we wanna look at what happens right at the point where they meet. Ready, set, go. Well, that was really all right, so let's do that one more time. Ready, set, go. 
Good. So we were flipping from our equilibrium point to about uh, two tiles away. And if you notice the point where they met, that was a real big spike. Okay, this time my partner's going to go to his left and I'm also going to go to my left. So it's going to be on the opposite side. Ready, set, go. Ooh, this is harder to tell. What happens where those waves meet? Ready, set, go. The other thing we want to try to see is what wave do I receive and what wave does my partner receive? Like, do I get his and he gets mine or do I get mine right back when they hit each other? Ready, set, go. Ooh, tough to tell because they kind of flatten out here. Okay, so this next time we're now going to send the different kinds of waves. I'm going to send a longitudinal wave and my partner is going to send a transverse wave and at the same time and we're going to see them if they can go through each other or if they have to bounce off of each other. So what do you think happens here? Okay, so you can send pulses and I'm going to send longitudinal waves and go a little faster too. Even faster. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to send that through you. Okay, and then um, you want to do the other one and I'll do the transverse? Okay, ready, go. Gosh, it looks like a crazy mess, doesn't it? But you can see it snake its way through the coils. That's excellent. The other thing, um, do the, tr the longitudinal wave again, send a compression down at me. So the other thing that we want to see is you still have coils in your hand. The coils didn't leave your hand and end up in my hand, but the energy did. And that's the important part of about a wave too. The waves carry energy, but they don't disturb the matter from one place to another, but the wave goes from one place to another. Okay, well that's pretty much all that we can share with you guys for this part of the lab.